What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to easily use pandas to process excel files and speed up calculations and maybe even visualizations so let us get right into it all right so we're going to use pandas in order to work with excel files in terms of taking the data that we already have and doing some calculations that are maybe more complex or that are easier to do in Python, uh, and then maybe also doing some visualizations. And for that, obviously, we're going to need some external libraries. We're going to open up CMD and we're going to install, first of all, Pandas itself. Then we're going to also install matplotlib for possible visualizations. So pip install matplotlib like that. Um, and then optionally, this uh, you don't have to do this for the video today, but what you can also do is you can also uh, install the pandas data reader to get some data if you don't have some. So if you have an Excel file that you want to work with already, you don't need to do that. Otherwise, you can go with the pandas dash data reader as well here. Um, and then you can download some finance data. So in my case, I have this Excel file here prepared. You can see we have the ticker symbol FB for Facebook. We have some dates. Uh, we have an open price and close price of the day. We have a volume that was traded and we have the month uh, that all this happened in. And, uh, you know, if you don't have this data, first of all, again, as I said, you can just uh, use your own data, but you can also create it by saying, um, what was it? Import pandas data reader data reader as web and then you can go ahead and say data frame is web dot data reader and you can say fb um yahoo then you can specify a start and end date by saying import date time as dt and then you can say okay start is equal to dt date time and then 2020 first of january for example and end is dt date time dot now and then you can specify here start and and this is not part of the excel tutorial this is just how to generate some sample data for this tutorial if you don't have it so then you have this data frame you can say then uh, df2 underscore excel and then specify a file name uh, and you can add some details if you want to so this is not the focus of today's video just get some excel file here uh, this is just how you can create a sample file then what we want to do is we want to say import pandas spd and we're going to say now that our data frame is going to be pandas so pd dot read underscore excel and we're going to read in the test dot x s uh, xl sx file here and we're going to print the data frame to see what it looks like in python um and in this case you can see we have the ticker symbol the date uh the open the close the volume the month and now you can have many different things that you want to do. For example, maybe you want to group the data by month and you want to uh, have certain operations. So this is something that you can probably also do somehow in Excel. I'm not an Excel fan, so I don't know how to do it in Excel. Uh, but you can go ahead now and say df.group by and specify, okay, you want to group by the month column. And uh, then we want to aggregate the individual columns. So we say dot agg. Now we can also just say dot sum if you want to have the sum of all the columns. Uh, but we can say, for example, here dot agg. So aggregate essentially and specify the column name and what should happen with that column name. For example, for the volume, we can say, okay, the volume should be summed up. Uh, the, the opening price, so the open column should. Um, use the mean function. So we want to take the average. Same with the close, for example. I'm not sure if we have to specify all the columns or if it just takes the columns that we specify. There you go. It takes only the columns that we specify. So now we have here the month and we have uh, the volume, the open and the close. Here we have the sum. So the volumes of all stocks um, summed up. And then here we have the mean. And you have also some other stuff like median and all, and all that. Uh, but this is how you can do that here. So now we can go ahead and do some visualization. So we can say, for example, import matplotlib as uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And we can go down here and say plt.plot. And we want to plot, for example, let's not print this, but save this as the data frame. So save the changes that we have made. Uh, what's the problem here now? Unresolved reference. Why is that? because I have a closing bracket here at the end. 
uh, and then we can say plot essentially just df dot volume if that's what we want to plot right now we can go ahead and run this and see if that already works or if we need some additional uh, of course we need to say also plt show since we're not in a Jupyter notebook but that should already be enough here now this is just a volume plotted maybe you want to now see also um, the ticks all the ticks here so you want to see one two three four five six seven and so on all of them uh, if you want to do that you just have to specify that in matplotlib and you say plt.xtix and you can then say uh, range from 1 to what was it 12 uh, if we want 12 to be included we should also uh, specify 13 because 13 will not be included then and there you go you have 1 to 12 um, this is some very basic stuff right so this is not some advanced panda stuff this is just taking excel files for those of you who are more comfortable with excel who maybe just start using python or want to start using python if you have an excel file like this you can do a lot of stuff in Excel. I'm not very uh, proficient at it, so I don't know how to do all of this here. But you can do all of it. Um, it's just oftentimes easier, especially when it comes to visualizations. Uh, you basically just group the data, you uh, plot the data, and then um, everything in Python is just more concrete because you write it in text instead of using point and click stuff. And instead of using a thousand parentheses and Excel functions where you call one function on the other function on the other function, uh, in Python, it's just more imperative or it's imperative in general. You say, do this, do this, do this. And this is how you can do that. For example, you load the Excel file, you group it. You can do all sorts of things. You can drop columns, you can combine columns, you can uh, create new features. So for example, I'm just gonna make up something right now. It doesn't make a lot of sense here, but I can say, for example, DF, and then I wanna create a new metric. I'm just gonna call this metric now. Uh, and, um, this metric is the df dot open price minus the df dot close price. And um, then we can go ahead and say print df metric or actually print df to see what it looks like. And then we also have the metric in there. Um, we can ignore the visualization here. But here you can see now we have this metric, just some arbitrary metric. And then we can go ahead and plot it as well. So I can say plt plot df dot metric and you can see in this case now we have the problem that the scale is very different so maybe we want to have a logarithmic scale so we can say plt y scale is logarithmic to have a, a better graph here in this case this uh you can see is problematic here though because we have negative values so maybe we want to um to just have a uh, different things for example percentage change or something like that so maybe we want to plot the metric dot pct change and the volume dot pct change because that should always be a smaller number so in this case you can see at least it makes uh, a little bit of sense here uh, to plot them together again we're not going to discuss here what makes sense or not because this is neither a finance tutorial nor is it uh, an advanced pandas tutorial it's just showing you how to basically get started with taking an Excel file, doing some stuff in, in Pandas. If you want to know more about Pandas uh, in particular, I have a lot of videos. Just go to my channel, type Pandas, and you can find a lot of tutorials on how to do some fancy things. But in this case, the focus is taking the Excel file, grouping the data. In this case, you can also not group the data. You can also treat the individual entries. So we can actually say, um, comment this out here, this as well. And then, you know, everything else stays the same. Then we have way more data. Um, but in this case, you know, we would have to use a different uh, plotting type. But this is how you do that. You load the Excel file, you do some calculations, you do some visualizations, depending on what you want to do. And this is oftentimes way easier than using Excel because in Pandas, if you know how to use Pandas, uh, you can do a lot more things. You can also write your own functions in a clear way without using a thousand parentheses and the visualizations using matplotlib or even something like seaborn it is very easy to do a correlation heat map let me maybe show you that here as well uh, we can just go ahead and say pip install seaborn and then uh, what we can do with pandas is you can just go ahead and take the data frame uh, i'm gonna delete all this here you can just uh, take the data frame and say dot core to get the correlation between those things and now you can see this is the correlation map. So you can see the open price correlates very, very strongly with the closing price of the day, obviously. 
uh, the volume has a slight negative correlation or actually not a slight it has a significant negative correlation with the open price um, and, and so on and so forth right so the metric is a metric that we just made up but we can now visualize that here also by saying import seaborn s s n s and then we can go ahead and say down here instead of printing that sns dot heat map and then um df dot correlation i think we can also say annotation true uh, i think it was the uh, palette or was it the color map that we specify maybe it was the color map um what do i usually go for yellow green blue is usually what i go for and then plt show that should show us a heat map of the correlations there you go so you can see okay the open and close price is almost one here i think it doesn't if it's a 0 0.999 it uh turns it into one because we have only two decimal places but there you go you just plotted a professional simple heat map in python you can now also go ahead and add some some stuff like uh plt.title you can say correlation why is this lagging now come on correlation heat map fb whatever and then you can say uh in this case using the axis doesn't make a lot of sense so x and y but um you can customize your visualizations the way you want you can also save them as an image so you can go ahead and say plt dot what was it save figure and then you can say heat map dot png and then you can use it in a paper or something so it's a very very simple process compared to excel now again i don't want to talk too much about excel okay why didn't this work now because i showed it i think that's the problem um i don't want to talk too much about excel there you go um because i'm not an excel expert or anything so i don't know maybe there's a fancy way to do some programming there as well but i have the impression that Python is just easier, straightforward, and you have way more possibilities, and it's way easier to use those possibilities. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video, and bye.